Have you ever followed a recipe inside another recipe? Like maybe step one is to make the sauce, and then step two is to add that sauce to the cooked pasta. That's basically what function notation is. We take step one of our recipe and add it into step two of the recipe, and the result is that we get spaghetti. We get pasta with red sauce. But realize that we could always swap out step one from the recipe, and then instead of plugging red sauce into our recipe function, we're plugging Alfredo sauce into our recipe function, which means the result isn't spaghetti with red sauce, it's Alfredo pasta with cream sauce. Today, we're gonna make this way less confusing. And let's be honest, function notation looks way more complicated than it really is. We're gonna talk about how to fix that. So if you've ever seen something like this, f of g of x, and thought, I actually have no idea what this means, you are not alone. It trips up a lot of people, but we're gonna fix that confusion by talking about what this means, how we evaluate functions, how to make sense of composite functions, how this applies in algebra and pre-calc, and by the end, everything's gonna be a lot more clear. So let's talk about why function notation actually feels so confusing in the first place. The first reason is that it looks like multiplication, but it is definitely not multiplication. Sometimes we see f of x, and we wanna treat this like f multiplied by x, or f times x, but that's not the case. This is just how we name a function. It's just what we call it. So the f tells us how it's named, and the x tells us what we're putting into it. So just remember that this is not f times x or anything like it. The other problem is that it's all letters. We see f of x, g of x, h of x. Sometimes we see things like this, f of x plus one or f of a, or this composite f of g of x. And it feels like it's all letters, no numbers, and it's really abstract. Sometimes it just feels like a mess and there's no clarity involved at all. But here's the truth. Let's talk about the core idea. f of x just means in words, and we'll break this down, the output when you plug x into the function f. And the best way to think about this is that f, the function, is like a machine. So if we picture a little machine, we're going to call this box, this machine, the function machine f of x. So this particular machine represents what f does. We would have a different function machine for g of x and a different one for h of x. And if we had one for g of x, it would tell us what g does. And a function machine for h of x would tell us what h does. In other words, if we feed x values into the function machine f of x, we put in one x value, and then this machine is going to spit out for us a different value called y or f of x. And it's the result that we get when we run x through the function f. The other way to think about this is as inputs and outputs. x is the input, f of x is the output, or x is the input, y is the output. Every time we put in an x, we're gonna get out an f of x, and those things are always going to be pairs. So think about the function f of x equals x squared. If we put in a value for x of three, that's like plugging three into the function. In other words, replacing every x in the function with the value three. So on this right-hand side, we get three squared, or of course, that's the same thing as nine. What that tells us is that when we put x equals three into the function machine for f, that the machine is going to spit out to us the value nine. So for this function in particular, this f of x function, every value we put in is gonna get squared and then spit out. So if the input is three, f turns that into nine. If the input is a, f turns that into a squared. If the input is x plus one, then f turns that into x plus one quantity squared. It doesn't matter what the input is, this particular function f tells us that the output is gonna be the square of that value that we put in. Now, if we can just hold on to that idea without getting overwhelmed by all of the letters, the idea of a composition is that when we have two functions, g of x is x plus two and f of x is x squared, then we can identify compositions of those two functions. So f of g of x, in the same way here that we said x was an input, three was an input, a was an input, x plus one was an input, here we're saying g of x is the input which means we take g of x, which is x plus two, and we put it in to f. That means that everywhere inside f, we replace x with x plus two. And so instead of x squared, we get x plus two quantity squared because we replaced this x right here with this x plus two. And so the composition f of g of x is x plus two quantity squared. Whenever things feel overwhelming with letters, try to always go back to inputs and outputs and the idea of a function machine. What is getting put in and what is coming out? 
let's talk about how we use functions in algebra and pre-calc and beyond. So in algebra, we already work with expressions and substitutions all the time. We know that if we see something like x squared plus 1 and we want to evaluate this expression at x equals 4, all we have to do is substitute 4 in for x and that becomes 4 squared plus 1 instead of x squared plus 1 or of course 16 plus 1 is 17. We're used to that idea of substitution. We're doing the same thing here with function notation. We're just substituting inputs into a function to get outputs. Here the input is 4 and the output is 17. Function notation is really just formalizing that substitution idea. And in pre-calc and calculus, we see functions continue to be used constantly. We'll use them for inverse functions, transformations, compositions, and any kind of graphing. We use function notation to express this parabola, f of x equals x squared. That's this function that we talked about earlier. And we learn how to transform functions by shifting them left and right, up, down, reflecting them, and stretching them or compressing them. When we're looking at a graph, function notation also helps us to read values. So f of 1 is just the y value at x equals 1. So we find x equals 1, we go up to the graph, we go over to the y-axis, and then the value there at the y-axis is f of 1 because the input was 1 and the output is f of 1. Shifting this curve, which represents f of x, three units to the right, we express as f of x minus 3, because that represents a shift three units to the right. I talk more about horizontal transformations and why they feel backwards in my video about transformations. So let's look at some more examples that actually help clarify some confusion. So if we start with the function f of x equals 2x plus 1, let's again go back to inputs. When we put in 3, that means we plug 3 into the function and we get 2 times 3 plus 1, or 7. The input a gives us an output of 2a plus 1 which we can't simplify any further. And an input of x plus 2 gives us 2 times the quantity x plus 2 and then plus 1, which simplifies to 2x plus 5. In other words, this function machine for f takes any input x, doubles it, because we multiply here by 2, and then adds 1 to that result. So no matter what value we put into the function machine f, we take that value, we double it, and we add 1, which is why an input of 3 gives an output of 7, an input of a gives an output of 2a plus 1, and an input of x plus 2 gives an output of 2x plus 5. And now let's talk composition again. So with this same function, f of x, if we say that the input is g of x, which is x squared minus 5, if we want to find f of g of x, that means our input is g of x. So we take x squared minus 5 as our input, and we put it in to f. In other words, we're taking this value, we're going to double it, and then add 1. That means we take x squared minus 5, we double it, and then we add 1. We could leave the composition that way, or we could write this as 2x squared minus 10 plus 1, or 2x squared minus 9. And then if we want to find the composition the other way, because there's always two ways to find compositions of two functions here, this one tells us that f is our input, and we're going to plug that into g. So our input is going to be 2x plus 1. What does g tell us to do with x, or what does g tell us to do with our input? It tells us to take the input, square it, and then subtract 5 from the result. The input's 2x plus 1, so we have to take 2x plus 1, square it, and then subtract 5 from the result. So that means we take 2x plus 1, we square it, and then we subtract 5 from the result. That's our composition, or if we wanted to, we could rewrite this, taking the binomial 2x plus 1, and multiplying it by itself, 2x plus 1, that gives us 4x squared plus 2x plus 2x is plus 4x, and then 1 times 1 is 1, so plus 1, and then minus 5, or 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 minus 5 is a minus 4, and there's our composition, g of f of x. So what's the takeaway here? You're more ready for this than you think. Function notation is just a clean, powerful way to describe inputs and outputs. We don't need to memorize anything fancy. We just need to read each expression carefully and think about what the input is and what the function is telling us to do to that input. It always helps to say the rule out loud. This rule tells us take any input, square it, and then subtract five. If you can describe that rule out loud, then it's gonna make it a lot easier to plug an input into that rule and find the correct output. 
So these might look intimidating at first, but once you shift how you look at it, it actually becomes one of the most useful and consistent tools in all of math. If function notation has ever felt confusing, I hope this helped clear things up. And if you wanna keep learning with me, click the link below to start my complete Algebra 1 course.